Office report from 2004 put the number of Muslim extremists at about 16,000. The Twin Towers, they were bombed. Two buildings came down. 3,000 people died. After that, they went for the Pentagon as well. The young men who attend meetings, like the one in Walthamstow, who praise Allah when 9-11 is mentioned, envision an Islamic state, a world caliphate that includes Britain. Any other way of life, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, atheism, communism, capitalism, all of these ways of life will not save anyone from hellfire and they will be punished for this by Allah. At the mosque next door to the community center where the meeting was held, we show a tape of the meeting to the local imam, Ghulam Rabani. He is shocked by what he sees, especially by the zeal with which the men celebrate the carnage of 9-11. Especially chanting on this occasion. I think innocent people had been killed. Rabani is from an older immigrant generation. He leads the vast majority of Walthamstow's Muslims along a path of peace and tolerance. He could not be more unlike the radicals next door. He may share their anger at British foreign policy, but Imam Rabani does not share his young neighbor's vision of violence. We are proud to be Muslim, we are proud to be British. How can I say I'm Muslim and not British? My religion is Islam. My country is Britain. The young men say they want no part of Imam Rabani's brand of Islam, so they pray next door. But their defiance would be curtailed. Only weeks after this meeting, the British government banned the groups that sponsored it, using anti-terror laws passed after 7-7. And now, the police are in Walthamstow, searching for evidence of yet another alleged terror plot in Britain. Next, what about the U.S.? Are there enemies among us? In the U.S., five years after 9-11, there's an uneasy calm. If you ask most Americans, do you believe there will be another terrorist attack domestically in the United States, they'll tell you yes. If you ask them if you think that terrorist attack will affect them, they'll probably tell you no. So why does the U.S. seem so insulated from the homegrown terror that's afflicting Europe? Part of the answer is here, in this diverse group of students at Emory University in Atlanta. Anil Naeem, a first-generation Pakistani-American, is the president of the Muslim Student Association on campus. His family came to America for a better life. A lot of the Muslim community that I think that's actually immigrated to America I find them to be often like the, the best of the society that they left behind, you know, in that they, they were actively seeking opportunity and that's why they came to this country to actually take advantage of that opportunity that, that this country presented. <laughs> opportunity for all, the American dream. It's a vision still largely shared in this nation of immigrants. Anil's dream, to become a doctor. I think uh, many Muslims living in this country, our hope is that if we engage in the community around us and if they recognize us on a personal level as opposed to an image on the TV, they'll come to understand that we share their hopes, we share their dreams, and we share their, many of their same experiences. Young Muslims like Anil illustrate why America is still different. Different from those countries where the vision for a growing number of young Muslims is one of jihad. The American uh, inclusive model that has really enabled the Muslim American community to integrate into mainstream America, to uh, prosper, to grow, and become, play a major role in the American social and economic uh, uh, lifeline. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as a British model, or the French model, or the German model. 
Muslim Americans are better educated than most Americans. They have higher incomes. And that's a very different picture than what we've seen in Europe, where so many countries in Europe have Muslim populations which have not been integrated, where the Muslims have disproportionately high unemployment rates, uh, where they're not well, particularly well educated. Basic meaning. And U.S. Muslims make up less than 2% of the country's entire population. A small number when compared to Europe. In France, for instance, uh, 10% of the population is Muslim. And in Britain, you know, there are one million Muslims living in London alone. The scale of Muslim immigration into these countries is much, much larger than it would be uh, in the United States. But, says FBI Director Robert Mueller, vigilance is still called for. The U.S., he says, is fertile ground for homegrown terror. And today, terrorist threats may come from smaller, more loosely defined individuals and cells who are not affiliated with al-Qaeda, but who are inspired by a violent jihadist message. One possible breeding ground for terror, prisons. Torrance, California, 2005. Four Americans charged with planning to attack military bases, an Israeli consulate, and synagogues. The leader, Kevin James, turning to radical Islam while here, at this California state prison. That's probably the principal problem, people converting to Islam in prison and taking on such a much more radical view. Elsewhere, across America, small but telling cases provide reason to worry about an enemy here at home. Lodi, California. Hamid Hayat, the young bearded man being interrogated in this FBI video, is a Pakistani-American. He left California for Pakistan to train in a terrorist camp in 2003 and 2004. And what do they do at these camps? They're, what, what they're doing is teaching people how to, how to kill American troops. Of course. Right? That's what the camps are all about. They do that. Yeah, exactly. Hyatt was convicted of providing material support to terrorists when he returned to the United States. Lackawanna, New York, 2001. Six American men of Yemeni descent traveled to an Al-Qaeda training camp in Afghanistan. Once back in the U.S., they were arrested and all six pleaded guilty to charges of providing material support to Al-Qaeda. A seventh suspect was last reported to be in Yemen. Toledo, Ohio, last February. Three men, two Jordanian Americans, the other from Lebanon, are arrested after being charged with plotting to attack U.S. forces in Iraq. One is accused of planning to harm President Bush. All three pleaded not guilty. Atlanta, Georgia, last March. A college student of Pakistani descent, along with a 19-year-old American of Bangladeshi descent, are accused of filming possible targets, including the U.S. Capitol. Today, both are in federal custody. The two pleaded not guilty. It's this generation, the jihad generation, the so-called the uh, self-generating cells, the autonomous independent cells that really are becoming now a major threat and they are replacing Al-Qaeda as the most potent threat to the international security. The good news, since 9-11, there has not been a successful plot carried out in the United States. But how long will our luck hold? When we return, listening and watching for signs of terror.